toast to their career. The perfect combination, boy. Hip hop legends in the South. This is sports fans' only home for the hottest sports show around. These guys are on fire. You're now listening to KJ and Sean Mack. Thanks for tuning in, sports fans only. C. Anthony back with another video. On deck, Tyson, Gypsy King, Fury. The date's nearing um, July 24th this year for this upcoming trilogy against the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder. Fury's ramping up his talking, ramping up in his um, training camp also. He's starting to look, um, <laughs> he's looking in shape for as big as a guy, 270 pounds, almost 300 pounds can look and um he's starting to say some interesting things he said he's right now he's predicting he's gonna mac truck <laughs> he's gonna mac truck deontay wilder is gonna be a third round knockout victory he also made some statements about malik scott he said malik scott is a loser so he has a loser training a loser and that's not a good recipe versus him so some strong comments by tyson fury also he's um He's really ready for this fight. He's also talking about Anthony Joshua on the flip side of this fight. Also, we all know Tyson Fury, 6'9", 276. I would say Sugar Hill made some statements that um, also reiterated the same thing. That they're looking for an early knockout this time. They're not going to do like the first fight and try to outpoint him. They got, it's going to be more of a repeat of the second fight. They're going to come straight to him and bring it to Deontay Wilder and put him on the back foot. As for Deontay Wilder, I have to say he's looking really, really good right now. I'll, he's um probably looking in the best shape I've ever seen him in his life. And the few videos that he put up, he's looking. You see the improvements that are coming there. He's actually catching and shooting now. He's moving ahead. He's um look like he's trying to set up a little bit of time in action also to try to catch Fury maybe coming in. So shouts out to Deontay Wilder. He's looking good and um. It's going to be a competitive fight coming up, but I would I would like to say also that um some of the things that he's doing may not carry over into this fight. If even if they do or don't, it's still going to make him a much better all around complete fighter for the future, no matter what the outcome of this Tyson Fury fight. So, and um this week Mike Tyson's been doing a lot of speaking. Also, Mike Tyson really thinks that Tyson Fury has no shot. I'm sorry, think Deontay Wilder has no shot. He says that um. He kind of brought up Evander Holyfield, and he said in the, his first fight and second fight with Evander Holyfield, he was confident, and he thought he had the tools to win, but he was actually shocked that another man was just actually better and had his number. So <clears throat> that's sort of how he sees the outcome of this fight coming. He thinks that Tyson Fury will blow Deontay Wilder out of the water. So that's going to be very interesting coming from Mike Tyson. We all know, and he's well-respected. Also, Paulie Malignaggi, he's been doing a lot of talking. Also, I can't say I agree with everything he's saying, but he is making some good points that um, the things you learn, the way you fight is the way you fight. You know, Deontay Wilder, he can get a lot sharper, but those things may not carry over to the next immediate fight. We all know he um, he had a, he lost two fights to Tyson Fury, so he's already 0-2, and, and then he's coming off of an 18-month layoff, so... Coming off of a layoff, an 18-month layoff and a loss in dramatic fashion may not be a good thing. He also thinks, um, speaking of Malinaji, he thinks that Tyson Fury is going to obliterate um, Deontay Wilder. I'm not sure if I agree with that or not. I'm still right in the middle. My stance has changed on Deontay Wilder's skills because he's looking really good. But I'm not sure about being obliterated, but I understand what he's saying. Um, you know, in this fight, I would say... Um, He's going to have to fight on the back foot. So I kind of think what Paulie's saying maybe is that, um, you know, you might be going to the body. You might catch and shoot. You might look real good. You might have also tightened up your stance a little bit. You looked a little bit rocky. And, you know, you might have tightened those things up. But in spar, I haven't seen a lot of sparring with Deontay Wilder. If he's not fighting those guys who are going to push him and put, make him fight off the back foot, I think it's a, a done deal. And I think it might be an easy Tyson Fury victory, you know, um, 
Tyson's probably going to come um, different ways. You know, he might not start fast. He might start in a slick style like he did in the first fight and then ramp up. But his mission is to run and blow through Deontay Wilder, put him on the back foot. We haven't seen Deontay on the back foot. He comes forward with crushing power, probably some of the best in heavyweight history. And um, so, you know, um, he came out with, I would say, you know, that one trick pony. But now he's trying to tighten everything up. Just not sure if that's going to carry over. There, there is some um, sense of urgency in the Tyson Fury camp to um, take it very serious and get Deontay out of there. But on the flip side, the longer the fight lasts, I think that Deontay wants the fight settle and the um, the butterflies and everything and adrenaline balances out. He's going to notice he's right in the fight with the same guy who's bigger and um, a big presence in the ring. And, you know, on the back foot is not a good look for Deontay Wilder. So I don't see how he's going to really... Um, how he's going to do some of the things that he's thinking. He think it's going to be um, on his side. He think he's going to like blow him out. Now, um, I would, I'll say this before I wrap up. You know, there's about seven different reasons why a lot of people say that Deontay lost. One being Mark Breland. I don't think getting rid of Breland was a good thing. I think that adding um, Malik Scott would have been good to let him and Breland work together. But this is going to be a real good fight. It's, clo it's closing, closing in. And in the press conference, I'll say Fury was himself. I felt like he was being genuine. Deontay Wilder was quiet, like very, very reserved. I'm not sure how, what I'm not sure how that's how to read that because he looked a little bit timid. I'm not sure if he's keeping it all in for that night or he re uh, he realized that, you know, it's a couple of weeks, six to eight weeks out from the fight, and it, he's actually not up to par with the skills. I I did speak highly of Tyson Fury in the past. I think he has a slick style. I think he's um. Has a high ring IQ also. I don't think that Deontay can gain that overnight. I think that Deontay Wilder might resort back to fighting in the old style. And I think that Tyson Fury is ready for that. So in closing, I'm going to say that um, seems like Paulie Malignaggi and Mike Tyson share some of my same sentiments on this fight. I don't think that you can be 0-2 in a fight and confidently believe inside that you have the tools to just go out and dominate. I think it might be survival. A win for Deontay Wilder might just be to not get knocked out and go 12 rounds and take it that way. There will be a 60-40 split, I believe. Tyson Fury is guaranteed a $30 million and plus extra ends on the back end of the pay-per-view. I think Deontay Wilder is going to walk with about 20 to $22 million with extra money on the back side of the pay-per-view. So I'm going to leave it right there. We'll catch back up. This is going to be at the T-Mobile Arena, July 24th of this year and um, a lot of implications on this fight in the heavyweight division if you like the content hit the like button share subscribe sports fans only peace